They say entrepreneurship is a journey, not a sprint. Not a sprint. Tuolingaga 2008, Making Moves has showcased over 150 young entrepreneurs across all nine provinces. One can have some business, but seven of the sectors are to develop 15 customers from North to Sagudi. In a season, we revisit some of these businesses to find out what moves have they been making since our last visit. It doesn't matter how slow you go, as long as you keep on moving. Making Moves, inspiring a generation of young entrepreneurs. Namtanje we make you moves. So kuta is kati no soma business ababili. Asiga saba na bo lapa gulo luse lolwit. Oh kala wabu, saltangana na eku season three. Kando munya wabu, saltangana na eku season five. Kusu zindri gu make you moves. Sawe tulela ins izwa epu malapa ek apa. Ika malaki uterin smithsin. Ongu mpati wen kampani ya zwangu kutiwa yi DMS Plumbing CC. Uterin weza lapa eko lene pupolo gutiena ufunuwa ongu mpati we plumbing kampani. Kale sasuka tisdina gu mwone. I business lake lal sel ngani. Yena ke futene imoto ezi mbili. Aya isi seven zisa lapa i business in lake. Namta anje ezi mtosa zi kukugili. Uterin, ushatil. Yena no mngake. Basanda utola ingani. Futige i business lake. Litutuga ngenge la ezi ma. Gemvoka lapho sihlangana nono mpumelelo sana le nzuzi umphathi wenkampani yazi wangokuthiwa inzuzi architect ezinze egoal We met her in season 5 as a young and resilient entrepreneur Since being on the show she has managed to grow her business slightly and secure projects Nali utabalwakhe The South African construction industry is poised for great economic growth, despite economic setbacks that we experienced in 2014. Right now, I still feel very excited for young entrepreneurs looking to get into the sector, especially if they are focusing on the services industry. The total income for construction industry in 2011 was 268 100 million. The total number of persons employed in construction at the end of June 2011 was 479 700,000. Construction companies most. Women are becoming open-minded these days. They different they taking different routes and different paths. So I don't think it's men only in the industry. I think women are also involved in the construction industry. Profit margins in the construction industry in 2007 and in 2011, particularly in plumbing, were 146 million and 77 million respectively. But how many percent of us are Obviously, government they are not about to be able to do it. But when we so it's good. Actual government construction expenditure in 2013 was 12.7 billion, below the 2012 forecast. Somewhere around in the country, a house is being built, uh, bridges are being built, schools are being built, malls are being renovated. So yeah, I think it is profitable. The plumbing industry also has the opportunity for huge growth, especially for young entrepreneurs looking to get into that space where they can offer support to estates. There is a growing market of estates ranging from KZN all the way through to Gauteng from a geographic perspective. And there are very few niche players that can participate there due to the lack of quality in that industry, lack of trust and brands that can be built. Construction in Kunda and Mesulu and Kuluka Kulu Gulel in Sengaman. But on the Pango Gutsiga is Piliti, Laki, and Galentella Lawage, Amania Kua, like Telengam, Putinga Umuntu, also a travel of Pilit, which Mesaki, as a Kua Pumeganjan. Ila Poga Konagun, Ganagumunta Bambis and Wood, the architect. There is also the Sipega Yonagel and Kuntalim. It was also an Aika Malak, Umpum. Sat the Nugumona three years ago, Lapo, if this is like it, why Sandu Gutala, Koto Gal Simem Dizagat. Today I'm told with the business like it. Little to make a cool. Working on eight projects, putting out such action, a banya bandabazum sees a would be little like. I guess you want to with the business like a little to a ganjan, putting a inigam sizzle with him to two. I am Sanele Nombumele Lonzuza, born in Kwazulu Natal, the last born of three children, and I'm still proudly a daddy's girl. Sanwe, 
Seapil and Jan. Seapil. I know. It's been a long time. It's been about two and a half years. Uh huh. Yeah. Got to intend to get a branding. You can't get one. Shin to lose. Gang salary. We must have fun. I like it. Yeah. No. I see. I'm a put one. Thank. I see. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they are actually just recently retired mm -hmm. and just enjoying life now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, back up, you to No, those things take time. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just because you've reached a certain age, Yeah, no. So, let's work on that. Takes a while. <laughs> yes. No, intentionally. So, last time you born, your friend said, you never have his cut, so because you're always working. Have you found a way to strike a balance? I know, you know, right now we're still at the point where Sakuli is a company. Yeah. So it's kind of so relaxed, I think. I think. You know, um, I'm still working, I'm along hours. I do have support, I've yeah. brought on more, more stuff. Uh -huh. But um, it means that I still also have to be there. The commitment is a corner. Um, seven, um, seven, nine, six, seven, seven, seven. You look great. Have you lost weight or something yet? Yeah? I was a huge teenager, huge, right? Like seventy-eight kgs in like standard four or something. I mean, thank you. <laughs> no, I unfortunately like see only gym stress. Yeah, no. You think I have fun and tolu mundo zosi zo buti as you know as say as pegela breakfast, lunch, and supper Monday to Friday because it's cut as if we're in Bella. We tell you who was who's pegela young girl young girl. But I must say, look, I'm trying to keep it as balanced as possible by finding ways to actually find a support system. When I eat in ten years, would you eat? You know, that gives that extra push to you. Look, I mean, you start off with a dream, mm -hmm. and um, I have good mentors. You know, my parents, I've got my business mentor, mm -hmm. um, and I was very clear from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, um, you have to pay your dues. Mm -hmm. So I just keep my eye on the prize. I'm far from where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just working towards that dream. Mm -hmm. And I can see that I'm getting closer and closer, and that's what drives me. That I can see that something is happening. Yeah. When I also cool me, I'm not as a business leader, which is why I'm also here. I've seen that uh, you know there's a few modifications that are done from Ngalenga Pantle, cars are branded, branding outside. <laughs> but as Ngalenga Pantle, this is what's going to happen as a business. That's right, Nakan. Lead the way, madam. We asked her to put together a set of 3Ds for presentation for one of our high-end brands at Mall of Africa. Um, and what essentially happened was that we gave her the design and she had to put together the 3D presentation and we were very happy with the quality of work. I'm the director of Nduza Architects. Not only do we offer design services, but we also offer interior architecture, project management, and landscape architectural services. We are situated in Johannesburg. We also have a satellite office in East London. And if you'd like to know more about us, please contact us on www.nzuzaarchitects.co.za. Alternatively, on info at nzuzaarchitects.co.za. Welcome to our new space. Ah. Yes, um, this is our technical office, yes. uh, drawing office. Mm -hmm. um, as you know from the last time, this is where we basically produce all our work. Yes. Um, work like this. Yeah. Yeah, so what we do for submissions, construction, drawings, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. This section, yeah, it's going in now. Mind you, sweet, let's hang along. Talk to me, why the shift in layout here of Isla Komanji? Well, what happened um, last year, uh -huh. 2015 Mounzi Mada Big Up. So I had to make a very quick decision with how am I going to survive and keep my keep my property. Yeah. So in then I ended up because the office Langa Pambil was already well set up for uh -huh. ourselves. Uh -huh. I render out. As you can see, this was originally a lounge, yeah. converted to a reception. 
This is what's going to be a boardroom in oh, future. Oh, we boardroom here in the hands of one and Baba the Fana Mamichi. Yeah. Okay. Carpenter is up easy. Okay. Um, because of cost constraints, to try and make a little bit of money, I rent out part of space. Oh, go money moon to sell seven zelala. Yes. Or actually company for seven zelala. Yeah, no. Ah, not okay. Le, le space, okay. Lizzie. So now, the office space has bitten a huge chunk of your living space. Yes, it has. But those are the sacrifices you have to make. Uh, uh -huh. You have to find other sources of income when things are hard. You know, uh -huh. you can't give up on your dream because times are hard right now. Yes. Find a way to survive. And then, you know, as the tide turns, you are there. Uh -huh. You are still alive to, to ride it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look, uh, that's the problem, but mm. in personal life, yeah, is a safari, but yes. once again, you need to have a deadline for that sort of yeah. lifestyle. Um, you are sacrificing. Mm -hmm. um, more, you never switch off. Mm. It's so difficult. You are right next door. All I have to do is open two doors and get and pinning seven, which happens a lot. Yeah. Um, but you do it um, with a deadline, and I've got my deadline. <laughs> and because, look, uh, you do feel at some point you would look, what about me? Yes. Um, I'm sacrificing so much. When do I get to actually enjoy the benefits of it? Yeah. And yes, my deadline is coming up soon. Uh, there's three gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, they are my uh, technical staff. Yes. So my candidate architects, uh, candidate senior architectural technologists are you too. Mm -hmm. So we've already planned for an extension yeah. for when we bring on more staff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that will generally be the space. So total number of employees you have right now? There is five. Five? Yeah. I know, they are cool business. Um, I'm an architectural technologist here at Nzusa Architects. So um, what I do is um, I interpret drawings um, to create uh, the technical work from it and also do some design for the, uh, for the designs and also go to sites and take measurements and, and things like that for the projects. I can say that uh, working with a female boss, actually it's an experience for the first time and um, Actually, I'm, I'm very much comfortable because anyways, I'm all about equality and, and all of those things. So I, I respect her as a boss and also she's open. She's, she's a social person and with that on top of it, it actually makes it easier for, for me to be comfortable in this office and also to communicate issues if I have problems, you know, I'm, it's easy for me to talk to her. I can say it's been really good so far. I see young Kinto has changed. Mm -hmm. Utonga lo lo la panga panza lseko sekno tingo elenzo tisboni langa parat. I branding i kona inkulu la panga panze ne moto seboni brandiwe. Konke logo ingabena sekuletele business elenzo tibuya albona ku 2016. I know Impel. Um, Saka la ngaku kusene swagi branding on the building. Yes. And local six is a band bar ring and bell during the day. Obono mm. sengi lomga kolo upizi ga big sen asemin. So about the second opportunity, na sepso go for semin it's lit up the branding. So about buy a figure during the day, ba shugu tino ba tela uti spaces and ama renovations or upgrades or new building. Um, uzo bona nje amanya ma drawings of a client a figure just last week. Kwa nuko uti spaces with this into that they're converting into ama. Uh, residence for my students. Yes. Yeah. No, intentionally. When you were making movies the last time, what Ufuna Lumshini Lona were 3D software. Yes, mm. How good of an architect are you? I've got different strengths and different weaknesses. Okay. Um, I'm a good designer. Right. Um, my weaknesses is 3Ds. Okay. I'm good at 3Ds. I'm very good. I'm very fast. Okay. Very fast. And people will see me draw are always saying, yeah, we draw quickly because I, I use uh, shortcuts only. Okay. Um, but when it comes to 3Ds, I get better. And they are very important <laughs> these days. And I spend some Yeah. 3Ds are very expensive to buy. Most of the customers are okay, buy a buy a because I got a 3D, 3D modeling. Phone call and I'm not software. What do you tell you? 
ne was house hall la satenga early last year um those are all the investments la was awenza um leo software is 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 gabi gabi um kona e client kona ma clients that we would have never had without leo software abantu badinga ukuthi sibenzele just ama 3d um ama designs esey khona kodwa bafuna ukuthi sithengise i image yabo um khona abantu webuy bafuna ama projects baba fona ukwazi ukuthi ne you know would you be able to do this thing sometimes you then you can do a quick presentation to show your abilities without uthi uqale phansi udetail and then uluze leyo mali if the client actually maybe doesn't have the funds ah no into the process and i guess you won't need that we can some big garage game match the type of business that connects me with Nzuza it's um MIH projects we are involved in the built environment and we do from project development up until the implementation mainly in the housing arena but also civil you know apart from me being a mentor in the technical um um sphere i'm not sure what else she learns from me um but as a person as well uh, one of the things that i like as well is that she she goes out she goes and look for work she does not only depend on somebody holding her by hand so this is the boardroom yes ma'am um also doubles up as my checkpoint mm -hmm. as you can see with all the rolled out drawings yes. so i check uh, my guys work you know the drawing office mm -hmm. and beyond that i look at as bold drawings so that i can build my quotations yeah oh. okay eh last time we could bona ama client wakho we move from e private sector ngabe lokho section nje lena Yes, no look there's been a nice adjustment there. Um in the beginning of this year we got a uh, few public sector projects. Uh we're working on an addition on a hospital, we're working on a school, a nice. brand new school and we're working on a new library. And I think also what I like as well is that you know going out when you are young you don't have um a long experience with a particular company it takes courage. She's been able to show that and what I've seen is that she's grown um you know outside of me working with her she's actually managed to grow from a very small company to um where she is now she probably bordering medium you know in a very short space of time we'd asked her to put together a set of 3Ds for presentation for one of our high end brands at Mall of Africa Um and what essentially happened was that we gave her the design and chat to put together the 3D presentation and we were very happy with the quality of work. The time frames were a bit ridiculous. She was under a lot of pressure, but um she executed the work well in advance. It would have cost an arm and a leg to have it done um in the UK, which is where the brand is based. So for us to have it done locally and have it be of the quality that we received, we were more than happy I see that the growth plans is very much focused on the physical in terms of creating a larger space for the entrepreneur to work from but I don't hear anything with regards to the the growth around clientele Ata is a social entrepreneur and has been very instrumental in conceptualizing innovative concepts such as digital libraries, building community gyms and business innovation hubs. Today, he is our advisor. Last time when we were here, Sikoqa Nawe, you spoke about ama client ya tsatsa isikhathi ukukhokha. Ima mm. ukuthi ama challenges enhlambe yo low points akenza kala kule di business enhlambe wathi we lo kwakwacishe wathi khosa sacishe sacina sivala nje kwezinye indawo. As always I think we only come back ama client ngakhokhi. Mhm. Oh ngangi eh vule i company nga resign ngathenge all within 3 months. Okay? I client yangakhokha. Essentially cash flow le. Um it's a lesson I had to learn in business. So we find we plan is to say cash flow yako. Especially now having moved into e public sector work, it's become even more apparent what we planning yako melibe 
on point. But I decided to cook. Yeah. Uh, my project got mm -hmm. got the um, basil coca eventually. So you need to make sure to you keep both your private and public sector work. Because the private sector, you cook know, a little bit faster generally. Mm -hmm. But then make sure that you sit on top of the Maliako was with you. You know, the company can run until you get their payment. Yes. That way too. A business in a business city na ma challenges el pegana now. Yeah. Currently, ama challenges ako na lagu lil business lako atin in pegana now. Currently, I think really it's looking at strengthening the support structure. Um, like I said, even the last time we're looking at support, yes, I've got the support on board, but Safane si si kuli sele your support, you know, to match ama projects. So unfortunately with that, you need to just be very, very careful because you don't over, you know, a resource. Um, so right now, it's that lag effect between the payment and the current situation we're in. One of the challenges I do see here is trying to get the right support structure in place. So it's very important to see how you can smart source. You don't need to own the entire process as a small company. You can partner with other small companies that can provide you with niche services to help you get to the next step. The other thing that I see here in terms of the payment, so there is an agreement in place with the client. However, the entrepreneur has to then pay the support structure that she tries to bring closer. So don't overcommit yourself financially. Try to have agreements in place that will assist you in order to fulfill the process throughout from the beginning of conceptualization when you're starting to do your architectural plans all the way through to the end where it is delivery and you can then pay based on the success that you have with your clientele as well. Um, some of them says now we are sort of working on, which is getting ama you know the stage software for uh, having internal HR. Um, so e receptionist here to actually studying HR, um, and we're going on courses. We were able to get some funding actually um, through Mercedes Benz to actually go to these courses which we'll be attending next week. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say we're tackling that one, uh, we're tackling the one of resourcing. Um, right now it's just balancing between actually the projects that we have and waiting for a payment, yeah. otherwise things are going well. So one of the smart things that she is doing here is that she's upskilling the existing employees that she has and I think that's a great initiative. One of her challenges is balancing her time versus resources in this scenario. However, this is a typical challenge for most entrepreneurs. So I would say focus on continuing to grow the business because without income, without revenue, your business will continue to suffer. As an entrepreneur, continue to look at how do you grow your business, how do you grow the size of your business, and the rest will fall into place based on the initial ideas you had when you had your business plan. These will become very practical when you start to implement them and it will save your business. Yeah. Uh, um, locally, the idea is to just, you know, broaden into my the rest of my living space. Yes. As the company gets bigger, we'll need more room here. Yeah. And then nationally is to just ensure that we have satellite offices in every region throughout South mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah. And then beyond that, you know. Yeah. Yes. I see that the growth plans is very much focused on the physical in terms of creating a larger space for the entrepreneur to work from, but I don't hear anything with regards to the, the growth around clientele and how you're gonna reach more clients. So I think that again, this is your revenue, your clientele is the base of, in the growth of your business. Everything else will happen organically. So the more businesses you bring in, the more people you can then onboard, and then you can start looking at the expansion of your offices and not the other way around. As entrepreneurs, we often look inward and we look at what we are hosting as if our office is the nest and if we make it pretty, everybody will come. The real growth is to look outside and to look at how do we bring in more business into our company and to make our company attractive to potential clients on the outside. The growth plan should be focused on revenue. Manzuza, Gabonga Kulu is Katsako. I've enjoyed my time being here with you. I want to say that Kulu, even though you've downsized Ganano to office like Kulu to Balnani, I'm saying to say Kona, the business is Lonel Kulu. You've done more with the little that you have. Yes, thank you very much. So, Uba now. 
Now, we leave Renberg to head to the south to meet Mr. Plumber, Darren Smithson of DMS Plumbing. His business has grown, so has his family. In them Funugas, we would hear Naga Uter, no other pine of what TMS plumbing. His appears into us and Zil, as him Sizzle with business like Lea Pambi. I love being married to my husband. Um, we make a good team, the two of us. He's the yin, I'm the yang, we one and one. I'll never forget after having my child, um, Aaron did the skin on skin, I don't know if you're familiar with it, so they make, they take his shirt off and they put the baby naked on top of the parent. And it's normally straight onto the mom because the baby's lived in the mom for so long. And I opted for Darren to do the skin on skin. And I will never, ever, ever to this day forget the look on my husband's face when he held his son on his chest. He changed instantly, he became a dad. That feeling that my husband loves his child and my baby so much is irreplaceable. I'm thankful to God for that. I like the space though, eh? Thanks, man. Beautiful. Yeah. We had to increase just for the business and uh, we've got a plus one now, a little boy. Okay, no, I heard about that. I heard that you're a married man. Indeed. <laughs> You've got a little one? Yes, I do. So your little one gets time to run around here? Little, uh, yeah, well, he's uh, three months old. Okay. So he's going to get to the running stage soon. Yes, sir. Um, you know, with my, I must uh, add it in, my, with me being plumber. Yes. And um, Nikki's adopted the attitude of plumette. Yes. And we've called him Baby Plunger. Baby Plunger. <laughs> <laughs> I like the just name. Just a little, a little nickname for him. But yeah, he's cute, man. He's, yeah. uh, as each day goes by, I just love him that little bit more. Yeah, I heard father who changes your life, so I'm not a dad as yet, so I can't say much about that. Look, there's that still one. time, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there one day. What's the better time? So, Darren, how has, you know, life changed for you? Especially now that you're married, you're a new dad, and business is booming. But how have you personally grown, and how has life changed for you? I've got to bring up marriage first, because yes. I think that... Uh, in my circumstance, marriage was the best thing I ever did. Yes. And, um, you know, in my equation with my wife, one plus one makes three. Yeah. And when you first met us, we yeah. were engaged. Nikki was still working at Eastgate East at yes. the time. And we made a decision after that to become a team. Yes. And I'm a, I'm a good plumber. Yeah. And, I, and I'd like to think I'm really great with my staff. Yes. Um, and I, I'm, but I'm not good at, really good at managing money. Yes. And that's where my wife came in. Um, did you study further to prepare yourself in business to say maybe take up an extra business course? Funny you ask that, I wish I had. Because the lessons that I've learned in running a business have cost me a lot of money. Uh, just silly decisions that you make, um, you know, and, and, and so on. Uh, you know, cash flow decisions, money management. So, you know, my advice to someone, if you can do a course on small business management, time management, all those things will definitely help you in running your own business. You know, and my, my wife uh, brought balance yeah. to my life and, and to that equation of our business, and it works really well. What do you do for fun? I mean, the last time you and I met, we went bungee jumping at the Soweto Towers. Well, I've been thinking about it recently. I want to yeah. go back. That adrenaline is just something else. You no, know, I think I'm so. getting too old, so I'm not a fan <laughs> of that stuff anymore. <laughs> um, I, oh, I'm a little calmer these days. I think uh, from in terms of recreation, yeah. I'm a lot more at home now with Baba. Yeah. But when I do get to go out, I enjoy a good game of golf. Yeah. Uh, Are you play golf now? Yeah. Definitely. Look, uh, the handicap's not so great, yeah. but it's more of a social thing for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Out with a few mates outside in the air. Yeah. You followed your passion from an early age. Yes. Dropped out of high school to yes. pursue being a plumber. Correct. Growing up, 
uh, went to a couple of different schools growing up. Uh, finished up my high school in Johannesburg. Uh, finished up early, decided to leave school in Standard 8. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a little bit skeptical whether it's the right decision. Uh, for me it was. I had a goal in mind, I wanted to be a plumber. How, how can you stress the importance of following your passion and standing by what you believe? I think following your passion is probably one of the most single most important things you can do. You know, we spend, I don't know what the stat is, but I know it's roughly 70% of our lives at work. And I would say, make sure that you enjoy what you're doing. And if you're in something at the moment that you're not really enjoying, just think of that job that you're currently in as a stepping stone to something that you want to be doing. You see the branding, I like everything. Yeah, you know, this, uh, this is my wife's doing. You know, she comes from that marketing background from East Coast. Yes. She, when she joined me, we rebranded and re I mean, it looks super smart. No, that's so, good. This is not a plumbing man's uh, work, this. This is the work of, uh, no, this is very of suave. the missus. Yes. No, this is very, very suave. <laughs> anyway, Darren, last time I saw you, we spoke about your business. We spent time away from the business. Mm. So let's chat a bit about that. But shall we get ready to meet up with you guys and see all the work? Sounds good to me. Yes, sir. Cool. A lot of businesses can learn from this because many companies start out very small. They don't have the money to run their operations and so they use their, their deposit money to run their, their daily expenses. And this approach that he has used, it helps small businesses move forward. It helps them scale because he doesn't owe anybody. So Darren, mm. last time when we came through, you had that small office at your old place. That's right. This is where things get done. Dynamites come in small packages. So you don't need a big fancy office up in Not at all. Got to keep the overhead down. Yeah. Uh, lower overhead, bigger profit, huh? Yeah, we had a, we had a, well, it was a lot smaller than this. It was yeah. a two-bedroom place we lived in. Yes. We used as an office. Um, but yeah, we've since had to employ uh, additional staff yeah. to help us out and we needed the space. You're still working from home? Because this is just a cottage from an extension of your, your Yeah, so the, the business premises in the front of the property and yes. the, the house at the back and what I'm just trying to do is um, curb unnecessary costs. You know, to go and spend 10, 15,000 on rental, um, you know, keep your costs low. Alrighty, so let's go through to the site. I know okay. the bulk of your work happens outside. Yeah, nothing really happens outside. We're not like a, there's no customers coming in and yes. stuff like that. Everything takes place out there. Let's go. Cool. I think what I did, I brought a little bit of balance. Um, my dad taught me something called delayed gratification. So even though you want the nice thing now, Prolong it a little bit. It doesn't have to be now. Let's let's wait it out because you enjoy it so much more when you wait for something. And I showed Darren that. And he quite enjoys it now, I think. He's not reckless with his money anymore. He works really hard. Um, I think that's one of the the nicest attributes about my husband. And what makes it even better is he loves what he does. So it's not that Darren's, oh, I've got to work. He genuinely is loving the job he's doing. Well, DMS Plumbing is a construction plumbing company that offers uh, maintenance services as well. We have a maintenance division and we service not only Joburg, but Vault Triangle and Pretoria as well. Um, what I feel makes our business unique is that, we're, firstly, we have good communication in the business. We offer a unique service in that we're a family-run business. We offer that personal attention um, and we like to build good relationships with our clients. If you'd like to get a hold of us, our website is www.dmsplumbing.co.za. We have a toll-free number, 0800-PLUMBER, and PLUMBER is P-L-U-M-B-A. Well, I've been in the company for two years now. Um, I'm site management, my site manager, foreman. I send teams out to different jobs. I deal with clients. Uh, I've got to make sure that stock has been delivered to sites. Just before I started DMS, I was actually just running a, a van, um, meeting clients, doing the jobs physically. Um, and now at DMS, I'm actually part of management. 
and I've got more responsibilities. I've learned actually how to run a business um, and I keep on learning day to day. I was in 2010. I was a driver and a plumber. I was in 2010 and I was in 2010. So, I was in 2010 and I was in 2010. I was in 2010 and I was in 2010. And then, I was in then it's a song and a person's song and a corner. And then later on, um, one child would die, was a young and mugger rooting up and seven zella. I'm born at which change she never could over. It was on giving his visa and his Vietnam bonani is achieved. And he say rooting ten a in of which is a basic commodity, even to an enban, uh, lemoto in ten. Mom compare la Mayama companies. I DMS is the best. That's why Ngabanguti equals centralist Kadesinga. All right, guys. Uh, jobs for today, uh, Don, they've been sent out. Okay, we know who's heading to construction and who's going to maintenance. So let's get going, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Sharp. Thank you. Dan, team has quite grown. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know how many w w staff we had when you last interviewed. Um, we're currently running at the moment four plumbing vans, 14 staff on hand, um, and things are going very, very well, and I'm um, looking forward to a very bright future. We're up to, up to 22 guys. 22 guys. And we are running seven vehicles at the moment. So, yes, sir. So things have grown considerably, yes. Oh, look at it, everything is well branded. You said something right now that I picked up when you said guys will be doing maintenance and others will be doing Construction, construction and whatnot. Yeah. So Please elaborate a bit about the DMS services. Yeah, you get some plum com plumbing companies that will just focus on maintenance. Yes. Um, others will just do construction. Yes. And we really do both. So we, yeah. we plumb holistically, you know, from every aspect of it. Yeah. And um, we've got a couple of sites running over Joburg at the moment. Yeah. So the teams that are dedicated to construction will head over. Mm -hmm. And then we have a few couple of clients that called this morning for no hot water and we've got a faulty heat pump. Yes. Um, we will go and attend to those as well. So the guys as they lead and they go off? Yes. Where are you and I going? So you and I will be heading off to uh, plumbing supplies. Yeah. Um, intricate part of our business is having plumbing material, yes. good quality plumbing material, uh -huh. and we headed down to our suppliers to go pick up some stuff. All right, cool. Here you are. You've set up, you want to need supplies, you want to find supplies, and you can get your material and get all these things going. How did you go about setting up all of that and setting up a good relationship with your suppliers? Oh, it comes with time, eh? It comes yeah. with time. I've been doing this for more than 10 years now. Yeah. And um, you, you go, as you, as you go on, so you grow. And, uh, you know, throughout life you make contacts and um, your name is important. Above all, above everything else, you've got to keep a good name. And my, a word of mouth spreads very fast, you know. People talk about good plumbers, yeah. you know. And uh, it's, it's, you just got to get in there and just uh, keep at it, eh? yeah. keep going at it. Darren, last time we met, you were servicing clients in Gauteng. Yes. East London, I think Durban as well. Yeah, we're doing a project down at, um, at Cape Town Fish Market, actually down in yes. East London. Yeah. And uh, we were doing a revamp of the same restaurant chain in Gateway Shopping Centre. Yeah. Yes. Are you still, you know, in other provinces? Do you still do work for other provinces? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Um, if the opportunity presents itself, we'll go. Yeah. I mean, I see that, you know, you've got a good system right now in place. Business is about putting, for me, it's about putting systems in place. Yes. That, that, uh, that make the business more efficient, yeah. but also help us control certain aspects. Yeah. You know, quality material is key, and this is a very important aspect of our business to manage. That's good. Cool. Shall we hit the road? Perfect. Let's just say goodbye. Just, just yes. Don't forget your invoice, boss. Sean, thanks, thanks. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Cheers, 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 cheers. Thanks, guys. Ciao. Thanks for coming. I think he's doing well in terms of classing his clients up front but it's more important to be able to take deposits based on the value that he brings. I think clients are always willing to pay if they know they're going to get value out of their supplier. So Darren, 
Um, please take me through what's going on here today. This site, which we'll show you just now, yeah. um, was one big warehouse originally. Yes. And we have divided it into 20 mini factories. Mm -hmm. Each one has its own office space yeah. uh, with the kitchenette, bathroom. And then in the warehouse, uh, we've done a staff shower, staff toilets, and, and wash-up area as well. Yeah. Um, this specific little piece that we're running at the moment, yes. um, the client asked us to put a garden tap in last minute onto the onto the guardhouse. Yeah. And uh, we have to make sure it's done today because they, they're laying new, as you can see, there's new tar being laid. Yes. And they're putting new tar down tomorrow. Yeah. So we've got to make sure the piping's in so that we don't have to break it open afterwards. I've changed it to my overall top. Yes. So let's get going. Let's okay. see what happens inside. Okay, you're going to get your hands dirty. Yes, sir. So now, with every business, you know there's challenges. Yes. What's the current challenges that you're facing? Some of our biggest challenges are clients that either pay us late um, or, or beyond late, which is three or four months. Jeez. And if you're a young company trying to start up um, and you're working for people and you aren't sure of how you're going to get paid, mm -hmm. then I would say you need to reevaluate if you really want to do work with them. One of the things I would suggest to an entrepreneur in this situation is to make sure that he takes deposits or at least a reasonable size deposit that could carry him, at least carry his material costs, de-risk him a little bit in terms of his labor as well. Um, this becomes very easy if you are delivering on quality, if the clients know who you are. It's important to class your clients in terms of who's your regular payers, who's your late payers, who will help you manage your risk. Risk in this business in terms of your cash flow is very important. If you don't have the money to go on, you're standing dead in the water. So I think he's doing well in terms of classing his clients up front, but it's more important to be able to take deposits based on the value that he brings. I think clients are always willing to pay if they know they're going to get value out of their supplier. So if my staff don't have anything to do, or, you know, we don't have anything, which is not the case, but if we did, I'd rather I stay at the office and find other work to do than go out and do work for people and you're not gonna get your money. Yeah. Because that's gonna put us even further into, yeah. into problems, yeah. Yes. Especially for you, because I know that, you know, with what you do and with the material that you buy, you pay for it up front. Yeah, what we, what we do on our side is, uh, like, although we have a 30-day account, yeah. we like to pay our accounts currently. Yeah. Um, you must remember, if you, as a business, you're getting all your money in, and you pay all the people you're supposed to, what you're left with is really yours. Yes. If you go and get all that money in and you start spending it before you pay your clients, you're gonna run into some serious problems in your business because rightfully that money's not yours. Well, bravo to Darren to starting to pay his accounts quite early, right? Or paying them up front. That helps a lot in terms of de-risking the business once again because now you know that you are covered and the money that is coming in is your money. It is your GP, it is your profit. So congratulations to him on that. A lot of businesses can learn from this because many companies start out very small. They don't have the money to run their operations and so they use their, their deposit money to run their, their daily expenses. And this approach that he has used, it helps small businesses move forward. It helps them scale because he doesn't owe anybody. And at the end of the day, what he's made is for himself. But he's also created a great relationship with his own suppliers and that way he gets better credibility with them to take on bigger projects. So for other small businesses, please copy this. Where and when you can. I know it doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen in, at some point in your business where you can start looking at moving towards this model in order to use the money that you have to pay your suppliers up front and then to take away the risk of not being able to pay them when the project is complete. Darren, I mean, one thing I've picked up about you, you haven't changed since the last time I met you. <laughs> you still down to earth. Thanks, I see sir. the growth in business. Everything has, you know, changed for you. <laughs> what has kept you to be this way? Uh, I think uh, I learned when I was very young, funny enough, uh, through my upbringing in the church and that I learned that uh, pride comes before the fall. Yes. And um, I think uh, if you're going to be like that, you're going to fall hard, you know. One of the things I pray is, you know, no matter how successful I get or how big we get, I just ask God to keep uh, my feet firmly on the ground. I think it's important to keep a level head. No one wants to deal with somebody who's proud and arrogant, you know. Yeah. Ah, wow. Well said. Thank you. Well said. I think I'm even lost for words with that one. Now, where are we seeing DMS Plumbing the next few years? What is your growth plan? I'd, I'd like to be a owner-managed national plumbing company. Yes, 
you know, and uh, and and build it to that level, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, take take it from there. Yeah. You know, um, I I believe there's a lot of business elsewhere in the country, mm -hmm. and if I can bring the good DMS service that we do in Joburg yes. to people at the coast, yeah, um, I think I'll be on a good wicket. I love the fact that Darren is looking at the national strategy in terms of his growth plan because there are opportunities nationally. But one of the things that we have to be wary of when we do start to look at expanding our business is to make sure that we have a plan in place in order to replicate that existing excellence in the business to those national locations. One of the biggest failure points is when you cannot provide that same experience, that client experience in other locations where you've done so well initially when you incubated your business and now you've moved beyond that and you've grown your business with other people who do not have that same passion or desire to grow the business in which way you in the way you do or to deliver on the same excellence that you have currently done within your organization so have a plan in place in terms of how you're going to replicate yourself and how you're going to replicate that client experience that you currently have in your existing region before you go beyond that and also the other thing that you need to do is how do you measure whether there is a satisfactory uh, demand where you are going. And one of the ways to do that is to, to start to look at doing surveys. And surveys can be either online or it can be done via scoping groups or it can be done by actually being in the area and trying to get an assessment through other businesses, how they are performing and what they are doing to grow in that particular area and what their challenges are. Because oftentimes, because we want to be big, we overlook the fact that there are challenges that may also hamper us from growing in that particular region. So I think this guy has some of the right merit in terms of what he wants to do, but there are simply basic steps that you need to follow before you go national. My advice would be, make sure you can replicate the excellence you currently have. No, nice one, Darren. Had a great time with you. Thanks but before I leave, let's get, let, let's get going, man. I need to work a little bit. Hey. The guys had me straightening out pipes a little bit and doing straight things. Can we just do something else? <laughs> I came here prepared. You know? I oh, see look. you put your... It's very clean. I see you put your overalls on. I think we'll let you off a bit easy today. Oh, you let me off a bit I easy we'll let today. You off a bit no, easy. next time when I come to visit then, there's something ready for me. Are you going to pick in for sure? Uh, trust me, I'll be there. Cool, <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> Go on. Have a good day. Eh? Cheers, bye-bye. Cheers, bye. cheers. I just want to say thanks to Making Moves for spending some time with us today. We've really enjoyed having you. You know, the last time we got together uh, was about six years ago, and we had four vehicles and about 14 staff. And we are proud to say that we have now seven vehicles and over 20 staff. And uh, hopefully the next time we touch base, we'll be a national business, and I look forward to it.